Man, it's even better on the 15th read. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there, dear viewers of SCP Explained. I'm on break between supervising SCP-682 termination attempts and inspecting the mops we use on SCP-173's leavings, so I decided to do what all the cool people are doing in their spare time right now. Rereading Chainsaw Man, the hit manga by Japanese author and artist Tatsuki Fujimoto. For the uninitiated, it's the story of Denji, a poor young man from Japan who makes his living hunting devils, dangerous creatures that are embodiments of mankind's greatest fears. But when that living leads to him dying at the hands of a gang of zombie Yakuza, believe me, it makes sense in context, he bonds with the legendary Chainsaw Devil and is reborn as Chainsaw Man, an unconventional superhero who chainsaws first and asks questions later. Naturally, I was eager to see how one of our own bloodthirsty killers would fare against Denji's Chainsaws of Fury, so I selected the most violent, battle-hardened, and carnage-hungry anomaly out there, SCP-076-2, the immortal warrior known as Abel. The two of them have a surprising amount of things in common. Both are effectively immortal and can revive after sustaining massive physical injuries. Both absolutely love to fight with their array of deadly weapons and anomalous strength. Both have been part of experimental operations groups, with Denji being a member of Japan's Public Safety Devil Hunters Division 4, and Abel being an ex-member of the SCP Foundation's disastrous Pandora's Box Mobile Task Force, most of which he later massacred out of boredom. You can probably see why these two really did feel like the perfect matchup. So after forcing the trusty Anomatron 6000 to read every currently available volume of Chainsaw Man and compute years of Abel's gruesome battle data, I've set up the perfect simulation for your viewing pleasure. And hey, fellow fans of the manga, isn't it horrifying that even we beat MAPPA to the punch of animating this thing? <laughs> ah, god, that joke will age poorly if that anime comes out before this. Anyway, let's crank this machine into action and let her rip. Japan, 1997. Everything is roasting in the July heat. Men in Black, Harrison Ford's Air Force One, and Airbud are hitting theaters for the first time. Everything is right with the world. That's why over in the headquarters of the Public Safety Devil Hunting Department, Denji, our chainsaw-loving hero, is being praised by his kind boss and mentor figure, Makima, a lovable, supportive woman who will never do anything wrong. She even loves dogs. How could a person who loves dogs ever be evil? That very morning, Denji and his chainsaw man form managed to defeat the accidentally making a mistake on your tax forms and now you're going to prison devil, who had been terrorizing downtown Tokyo. It was a challenging battle, but in the end, he'd managed to turn the tables and defeat the creature by setting it on fire. Needless to say, Makima was extremely pleased with Denji's work here, but now she had considerably more graver news to impart. She'd gotten word from an envoy of another organization that hunts down dangerous and anomalous creatures, the SCP Foundation, that an extremely lethal entity had breached their containment and was now somewhere in Japan. The entity in question was not a devil and thereby would be working on a different rule set. Makima opened a file faxed to her by the Foundation. Yes, remember, this is set in 1997 and gave Denji the crucial lowdown. Several hours ago, the entity known as Abel had resurrected from his huge black sarcophagus in the underwater chamber of the classified facility Containment Area 25B. After waking up, Abel had slaughtered his way through the entire base, killing every SCP Foundation operative in his path and then swimming out into the Pacific Ocean. Sometime after that, he infiltrated a Japanese cargo ship and murdered all the workers on board before steering the ship back towards the land of the rising sun, where he hoped to claim even more victims. Makima told Denji that it would fall to him and his associates to stop this Abel, with a little help from the SCP Foundation's intelligence. But be warned, Abel is an incredible combatant with extreme physical strength and durability, as well as surprising tactical intelligence. It wouldn't be an easy fight, but Makima promised that if Denji won, she'd hug him and go to a nearby karaoke bar with him. Denji replied, Consider him dead already, Miss Makima. Meanwhile, Abel was walking through the slums of Tokyo, marveling at the neon signs for bars and clubs. His journey to Japan hadn't been an accident. 
Abel had been to Japan once before, in the year 1605. He'd faced the legendary Japanese philosopher and swordsman Miyato Musashi, considered by many to be one of the greatest warriors in human history. Abel had dueled Musashi, who famously wielded two katanas at once, in the hills of the Harima province where, after a tense battle, Musashi cut him down. Abel would not resurrect again during Musashi's lifetime, but the battle gave him a deep and abiding respect for the legendary warrior. Abel knew that if the opportunity ever rose again, he would return to Japan in hopes of experiencing such a brilliant battle yet again. But the industrial and technological boom had changed so much. It was no longer the quiet and pastoral Japan he'd experienced, but a booming epicenter of trade and commerce. He found it all strange and perplexing. Suddenly, he found himself surrounded by a group of Japanese street thugs, many of them wielding switchblades. They laughed at his strange outfit, which to them looked like an old, worn bedsheet. One of the smarter members of the group had already decided to go home when the others made up their mind to mug Abel. The warrior's extensive tattoos made him look like a Middle Eastern Yakuza Don. The rest, however, were happy to take their chances with him. Empty your pockets if that goofy toga even has pockets, the leader said, holding up his switchblade. Unless you want to get cut. Abel just smirked and drew a pair of long, obsidian daggers. In the following moment, the alley was filled with screams, then was silent yet again. Abel walked on, breathing a sigh of disappointment at how incredibly mediocre this first fight had been, his blades dripping with fresh blood. Musashi is rolling in his grave, Abel thought to himself. Meanwhile, across town, Denji and the rest of Division 4 were mobilizing. It was him, the serious sword-wielding Aki, and the adorable, pathologically lying, blood-fiend Power. They'd been told over the phone by a man named Dr. Bright that Abel would be relatively easy to track down. He's not known for his subtlety. All you need to do is follow the trail of carnage he causes wherever he goes. From the way he talks about him, it seems almost as though Dr. Bright bears a personal grudge against Abel. How strange. Power didn't seem intimidated. She proudly proclaimed, I don't think this battle will be difficult at all. In fact, I've faced this Abel before and defeated him handily. Aki sighed and asked, when did this happen? Last Tuesday, of course, she replied. Power had only heard about Abel this morning, but Denji and Aki had learned better than to dispute her at this point. Suddenly, a large television screen that had been previously relaying an ad for a cutting-edge stereo system cut to an emergency news report. There had been a horrific incident in downtown Tokyo, where a bar had been attacked and most of its patrons murdered by a deranged, tattooed man carrying a pair of huge swords. Aki immediately recognized this place. The bar was Yakuza-owned. If this Abel was on the hunt for worthy opponents, it makes all the sense in the world that Japan's iconic crime syndicates would be his first target. Denji, Aki, and Power knew exactly where they needed to go. Over at the bar, Abel was having a whale of a time. Innocent patrons were running and screaming, while the Yakuza engaged in an all-out war with a terrifying inhuman warrior. Several of them had already been cut down. Two Yakuza soldiers behind the bar were reloading illegal Uzis and preparing to return fire. Both were sweating, terrified by the sudden, random attack. When they'd shot him before, he'd managed to dodge most of the bullets and expertly block the rest with his swords. Who the hell had sent this monster? Was he with the Triads, the Russian mob, or some devil summoned by the Japanese government to crack down on them? Whatever the case, he seemed almost impossible to kill. The two men stood back up and opened fire. Abel held his two swords and spun like a propeller, blocking all the bullets almost effortlessly. He then produced another dagger, seemingly from thin air, and threw it directly into the heart of one of the two remaining Yakuza behind the bar. He dropped to the ground dead instantly, leaving only his friend alive in a bar full of corpses. That's when Abel noticed a decorative katana behind the bar. He smiled and ordered the surviving Yakuza soldier to pick up the sword and give him a real fight. The hapless mobster realized in that moment that this guy was truly crazy, whoever he was. But what choice did he have now? With terror in his heart, the last surviving Yakuza grabbed the katana and unsheathed it. Good. 
Abel said, his voice deep and menacing. Now, come fight me. Let's see if you last a few seconds longer than your worthless friends, shall we? He did not. The second the Yakuza ran towards Abel, and the ancient swordsman swiped at him with one of his blades, cutting through the katana and the opponent holding it. A puny gangster never stood a chance against a deadly immortal warrior, and Abel was furious. The last time he was here, he faced a truly expert killer, who even managed to end Abel's life in a single combat. And now he was slaying insects in a karaoke bar. Pathetic. Suddenly, his ears pricked up. He turned to see a red axe flying at his head at incredible speeds. With his superhuman reflexes, he managed to dodge just in time, but the axe still cleaved off a chunk of his hair as it passed. Abel could see the one who threw it standing at the entrance to the bar. It was the blood fiend, Power, who'd made the axe out of her own blood. Standing next to her were Denji and Aki, Denji wielding an axe and Aki stoically observing. Damn, Miss Makima promised we'd do karaoke at this bar if I beat you, Denji said. You're going down for this. Abel smiled and pulled out another pair of blades. Finally, he roared. Warriors who fight the old-fashioned way. I feared the years had stolen you all from me. Power stepped forward, producing another blood axe from nowhere. She yelled, Tremble in fear, Abel. Tis I, your arch nemesis, the mighty power! Abel had literally never seen her before in his thousands of years of life, but he appreciated that these warriors were at least able to match his level of drama. As far as he was concerned, the fight was on. But even Abel didn't know the level of fighting he was getting in for here. As he charged forward, the trio split, immediately surrounding him. Good tactics, Abel thought to himself. Already, this was promising. Aki, who had remained quiet up to this point, attacked first. He drew a Titano knife from his suit jacket and slashed at Abel with impressive speed. But unlike three of the other combatants in this situation, Aki was only human, which gave him a serious disadvantage. Abel decided it would be best to put him out of commission first. With a quick and brutal kick to the chest, Aki was thrown against the wall with the majority of his ribs broken. Revved up by his own bloodlust, Abel turned to Denji in power and grinned like a maniac. This was already the most fun he'd had in a long time. Who are these people? Doesn't matter, he thought. They'll be dead soon anyway. While Abel was still locked in thought, Power pulled out a comically large hammer made out of her own blood and brought it down towards Abel. He was surprised by the sudden attack. Did this girl have the same weapon producing powers as him? This just keeps getting more interesting. Tis the end, Abel! Power screamed as the hammer came down. You have once again been defeated by the mighty Power! Again, just to clarify, these two had never met each other. But it was already too late. Abel punched upwards, his clenched fist colliding with the hammer. He hit it with such terrifying force that Power's blood hammer shattered against his knuckles. In that same instant, Abel noticed Denji running at him with an axe from behind. Abel produced another obsidian dagger and threw it into Denji's forehead, dropping him to the ground immediately. Pathetic. Power tried to produce another weapon, but she used up too much blood already. Before she had a chance to make anything substantial, Abel sprung forwards with terrifying speed trying to land a killing blow. But even weakened, Power was freakishly fast. She was able to dodge his blow and kick him in the ribs, momentarily stunning him. Of course, she took the time to gloat, putting her hands on her hips and laughing victoriously. Need a second to catch your breath, Abel. It is to be expected. None can keep up with me. She grandiously announced. Perhaps you should just give up and agree to become my servant. I might even teach you a thing or two about fighting. Suddenly, Abel was standing right in front of her, squeezing her throat with his iron grip. He smiled, flashing teeth, and said, If you want to kill, kill. Don't talk. With a surprisingly minimal amount of strength, he squeezed and heard a crunch from Power's neck. He dropped her limp body to the ground. Lucky for Power, Abel wasn't aware that a fiend like Power can survive an injury like this as long as she's fed some more blood. Instead, he just sighed in disappointment. Is that all you weaklings have to offer? He bellowed. Aki, barely conscious after being kicked against the wall, remained just conscious enough to activate his contract with a powerful beast known as the Fox Devil. He twists his hands into a strange gesture and whispers the word, Come, before falling unconscious. But that's still enough. 
Suddenly, a gigantic demonic fox claw burst through the wall of the bar, spraying dust and rubble everywhere. Abel was definitely not expecting that. He dodged several times as the claw swiped for him, often barely missing him. For its last strike, it lunged forward and raked four claw marks across his chest. Abel was shocked by the sudden pain. It felt fantastic. He pulled a long obsidian spear out of one of his pocket dimensions and forced it down through the fox devil's paw and into the ground, pinning it in place. After a moment of thrashing, the claw dissipated into smoke, lending Abel another victory, though even he would admit this was a more exciting fight than the other ones had been. Was that it? Had he gained total victory once more just like he so often did these days? He was about to take pity on himself when Denji rose up behind him. How about a rematch? Denji asked. Abel grinned. He liked this kid. Challenge me, child, Abel said. Well, since you asked, Denji smirked. Denji reached into his shirt and grabbed the ripcord emerging from his chest. It was time to go into overdrive on this thing. He gave it a mighty yank, and like the rev of a chainsaw, the madness began. Denji transformed, giant blades emerging from his arms and his head transformed into a toothy saw blade nightmare. He gave a mechanical roar that spewed smoke. This wasn't just Denji anymore. This was Chainsaw Man. Now this, Abel thought, feeling his adrenaline spike, is more like it. Following Denji's lead, Abel reached into one of his pocket dimensions and pulled out one of his favorite weapons, one he'd only previously used against the mighty hard-to-destroy reptile SCP-682, the Chainsaw Claymore. A huge two-handed sword with the eternally twisting, shredding teeth of a chainsaw ever circulating around it. It was time for Chainsaw vs. Chainsaw. What the hell are you waiting for? Chainsaw Man roared. Are we gonna stand around all day or are we gonna fight? Abel couldn't have said it better himself. The two charged at one another at lightning speeds, chainsaw clashing against chain sword. The sheer force of the contact was enough to send a shockwave blasting through the bar. It rapidly became a power struggle, each of them trying hard to force their chainsaws out of the stalemate. Realizing that this time he perhaps couldn't win with raw strength, Abel back flipped away to reassess his options. But Chainsaw Man had no intention of giving Abel time to think about it. He darted towards Abel with the weight and momentum of a runaway freight train. If Abel hadn't raised his claymore to parry, he would have been shredded to pieces by the devil's saws in an instant. Instead, the two of them rocketed out of the nearby wall in a cascade of debris, causing everyone on the outside street to run for their lives. The two quickly stood from the stumble. The two quickly stood up, catching their breath. Impressive, Abel said. You're much better than the others. Instead of replying, Denji briefly retracted his arm chainsaws and grabbed a nearby parked car, throwing it directly at Abel. Abel reacted quickly, cleaving the car in half with his claymore and charging for Chainsaw Man again. Just before Abel could land a lethal strike, Chainsaw Man deployed his chainsaws again, blocking the blow. Abel sped around him trying to strike again and again, but Chainsaw Man blocked every strike with stunning efficacy. Abel was astonished. Few had ever been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him like this before. He could feel his heart pounding gloriously in his chest. He would give Denji a warrior's death. With a furious yell, Abel brought down the Chainsaw Claymore for a devastating vertical strike, but Chainsaw Man was ready. He arranged his arm chainsaws in a cross formation like a giant pair of scissors and caught Abel's chainsword between them. Chainsaw Man pulled his arms in opposite directions, slicing Abel's mighty sword in half. The immortal swordsman skidded backwards to avoid the fallout, producing two smaller blades immediately. This Chainsaw Man just kept exceeding expectations, didn't he? Abel would need to change tactics if he wanted to win this one. Chainsaw Man was impressed by the speed and tenacity of his foe. For someone who apparently wasn't even a devil, Abel sure packed a hell of a punch. Did he ever run out of those damned weapons? As though attempting to answer Chainsaw Man's question for him, Abel began running around his flank, rapidly producing and throwing blades and axes in a startling volley. Chainsaw Man was able to use his chainsaw arms and face to block most of them, but not all of them. Several daggers and small throwing axes splattered into the tender flesh of Chainsaw Man's chest. Abel had successfully wounded him, and he wasn't done. Feeling a little more confident now, Abel decided to take a different tactic. He produced a large spiked mace from thin air and ran at Chainsaw Man while the devil was still recovering from his projectile attack. 
With one brutal whack, he sent Denji flying down the street, carving a rut into the concrete beneath him. But Abel wasn't done. While Chainsaw Man was still trying to recover, Abel leaped onto him and began beating him into the ground with his mace. The strikes were so brutal, they shook the earth and sent cracks across the surrounding ground. Then, Abel stopped. He realized, for a moment, that he was letting his bloodlust get the better of him. This was dishonorable. Where would be the fun in beating this boy to death while he lay on the ground and depriving himself of one of the greatest opponents he's had in quite some time? No, that would not do at all. He'd give him one more chance. On your feet, boy, Abel said. You fight well. Get up and carry on. I won't let a beast as rare as you die like a common dog. Rise and fight me. And Chainsaw Man did as he was told. Abel was shocked to see the very ground shatter underneath him as Chainsaw Man burst up through it, all his swords at the ready. The mace was thrown from Abel's hands as Chainsaw Man launched up towards him, all metal teeth and fury. Luckily for Abel, he pulled out a battle axe just in time to block the flurry of brutal strikes from the patron saint of chainsaws. Now this was a fight even Musashi would be proud of. Yes, boy, yes, Abel yelled. This is true combat. Chainsaw Man replied with the swing of his blades, which Abel was nearly able to dodge. The two finally landed back down on the ground, and Abel was fast enough to bury his battle axe in Chainsaw Man's shoulder. Before the devil could return a blow to Abel, the anomalous swordsman pulled out a pair of his favorite swords and locked Chainsaw Man's arms in place. Chainsaw Man was undeniably incredibly powerful, but it looked like Abel's superior experience and tactics might save him this time. What the hell are you? Chainsaw Man roared. You've been a worthy opponent, boy. Those are few and far between, Abel said. I'll remember you for this. But before Abel could execute a killing blow, he felt a blood-red throwing axe stick into his back. Abel winced in pain to see Power and Aki about 30 feet behind him. Power was propping Aki up. He donated some of his blood to bring her back to life, and she was just as delusionally cocky as ever. Abel was about to say something, but he already made a fatal mistake, letting his guard down. Before another word could pass the cursed warrior's lips, one of Chainsaw Man's arm chainsaws passed directly through his heart, tearing it apart within Abel's chest. It was a sudden and decisive killing blow. Chainsaw Man pulled his saw back out of Abel's chest, stained with the deadly anomaly's blood. Abel collapsed to the ground, wheezing and bleeding profusely from the hole in his chest. But strangely, as Power, Aki, and Chainsaw Man converged around him, they realized he was smiling. Thank you, Abel said, and died yet again. With the battle won, like an incredible hulk made of metal, Chainsaw Man transformed back into Denji. The trio stood around Abel's corpse, deeply confused as to what had just happened. If this was the kind of thing the SCP Foundation normally dealt with, they all silently agreed that perhaps it would be better not to get involved with them in the future. Except Power, of course, who said, You two should be thanking me for defeating him. You both owe me drinks for this. Hundreds of miles away in a black sarcophagus deep underwater, surrounded by professional SCP Foundation divers, Abel's body once again returned. Who knows how long he'd remain sleeping in there. But what we do know is that his deathless sleep was suffused with the sweet dreams, knowing that this world still held worthy opponents. And for Abel, that was everything. Now go check out Could SCP-682 Be Contained in the Backrooms and SCP-096 vs. Siren Head for more deranged out-of-universe crossovers from the SCP Foundation.